to Zambia last month from the 18th to the 28th. I spent 10 days with dear friends of mine experiencing everything from digging wells to playing games with orphans. Coming back, I experienced an addition to my soul I didn't remember picking up during the trip. It was God's courage that I carried with me. And today, I'm currently thinking of ways to use pictures I took in Africa to help raise money for water treatment equipment in the Dominican Republic. And every day, God reminds me why we are all so far in debt to him. This trip surprised me, and it gives me a more precious reason to live for the one true love in this lopsided world. There's a pair of drooping maiden who toils her life away with Though her voice would be merry, tis sighing all the day. Oh, hard times come again no more. Tis the song. Last year, during Celebration of Hope, God challenged my wife and me to take a step of faith with our financial gift. This is a big decision for us, and especially for me. The week before the offering, we were weighing the decision. There was a point in that week where I realized this really wasn't my call, and I gave in to God. I woke up the next morning feeling more alive than I ever had before. I think it was an overwhelming sense that God was using my life for his purpose. We gave a water system just like that one. And it provides clean water for an entire community in Kotwa, Zimbabwe. It was a moving experience for us and one of the most formative things we had ever done together as a family. We gave our gift to be a blessing to others and we've received the real blessing. Here's the song. After Celebration of Hope 2008, my wife Anita and I wanted to become more active in the global connection at Willow Creek. As I sifted through dozens of global needs, I found one that spoke to me. It was a preschool called Abrando Camino in the city of Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. I had a vision of my school here in the States developing a bond with the school in the DR, which to this day is appropriately named the Unity. Last year upon my visit to the Abrando Camino, I went across the border to a village in Haiti. A Haitian pastor 
invited me to attend a church service. We drove for an hour and a half before pulling up to a grass hut with a blue tarp as a roof. My pastor friend turned to me and said, there's the church. I said, you've got to be kidding me. But after worshiping God for two hours, everyone got up and the congregation walked for over a mile to a river where I watched nine people be baptized and then walked back to continue worshiping into the evening. As I watched over 100 energized Haitians worship God harder than anything I've ever seen, who had so little material items, praising and thanking God, I asked the pastor to translate what they were asking for. And he said, oh, they're not asking for anything. They're just simply thanking God for being alive and for providing hope through his very existence. My perception of church had changed forever. Tis the song, the sigh of the weary. Hard times, hard times, come again no more. How we tremble before thee. Have mercy, we implore. born in Nigeria, number nine of 13 kids. <clears throat> in Nigeria, there are terms for eating called 001 or 010 or 011. These terms are referring to breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If your family is on the 001 plan, it means you skip breakfast and lunch and you only eat dinner. And if you are on the 010 plan, you only eat lunch. This is not by choice, just the way things were and still are. Two years ago, during the celebration of hope, it dawned on me for the first time that growing up in our house, we were on the 011 plan most of the time, and on 001 plan on weekends and holidays when schools are closed. During school days, we got two pennies each so we could buy lunch in school, but on non school days, there was no lunch. Our house had no running water. We had to walk about one and a half miles to a stream to fetch water. Every weekday morning before I left for school, I would make two trips to the stream with three buckets each time. It was a balancing act with one bucket on my head and one in each hand. If you tripped, you lost almost all the water. For the past few years since we started Celebration of Hope, Every year has brought back different memories. When we collected clothes and shoes, I was reminded that I walked two miles every day to school without shoes for six years and got my first pair of shoes at the age of 12 when I was leaving for high school. When we packed school supplies, I was reminded of the fact that I got my first job at the age of six, fetching water at my cousin's construction site so I could buy my pencil and crayon for school. I lost my pencil, crayon, and eraser within the first two weeks of starting elementary school. And my mom told me she didn't have the money for new ones, and I would have to work to replace them, so she called my cousin. Celebration of hope is deeply personal to me, and I can tell you that your generosity has and is making a difference in many lives. And on their behalf, I would like to say thank you very much. So let us 